Hey everybody, Eagle Run 2-3 here. We've got ourselves a standard issue wall trimmers. This is a hair trimmer, beard trimmer, what have you. And this one is probably 10 years old or more, so I don't know if they have this model still available. But what I'm gonna show you today is applicable for virtually any standard setup uh, trimmer like this. It is possible to sharpen these and I cut my little boy's hair uh, about every two weeks and he mentioned the last couple of times starting to be a little snaggy and it has been a couple of years since I've sharpened them so I figured I would get some stuff out here and get these sharpened up and show you guys how to do it. So I have a little trough here for our water. In here we have a sharpening stone. Uh, this one is a thousand grit which is what I'll start with. I won't use the 400 and then we will finish off with an 8,000 grit. Now, if you don't have a knife sharpening stones and you're not interested in sharpening knives, you don't need to go buy these things. It is entirely possible to do this job with just a sheet of sandpaper. Now this is 600. I can't find my 2000, but I would recommend doing a 1000 and a 2000. If you can go higher, nothing wrong with that. You're pretty much just polishing after a thousand anyway, but it looks like this uh, 600 will not work. Don't use 600, that's too aggressive. If you have a really flat surface, I would recommend using a tile. I have a sheet of glass over here that I do stuff like this. It's called lapping, and you can totally do this job on a sheet of sandpaper. I'll put a link in the description for some sandpaper available on Amazon. And if you're interested in sharpening something else, I'll go ahead and have a link for these Amazon stones. I pick these up on Amazon myself and I use them all the time. You can really see the air coming out of the stone. You wanna soak stones like this in water and then uh, keep them wet as you're working with them. It's really interesting to watch because they really do soak up a lot of water. All right, let's talk about what makes these work. There's two little screws that come on the back here and you have the plate that moves side to side and the plate that stands still. So this one sets on here and actually vibrates back and forth while the one that you see here on the bottom is stationary. The action of those two items coming together is what cuts the hair. We're going to put a polish and remove some material here on the bottom and that will open up the inside here so that we have two sharp, perfectly straight edges coming together. And it's that slicing action that actually cuts the hair. So we want to make sure that everything is flat and I'll show you how to do that. Again, this process is called lapping. Pretty much anyone can do it. There's nothing special to it. Don't be intimidated by any of this. It's very simple stuff and stay tuned. At the end, I'm going to show you about something that they call setup which is how you have your blades uh, set up and how they interact with each other because there are some, uh, some things you need to pay attention to there. That'll be at the end of the video. Once we get this sharpened up, looks like our stone is almost ready. So uh, let's begin. All right, we're gonna be working on the 1000 grit side and we're gonna place our blade on here. Give this little figure eight action. You want to have even pressure don't push down too hard on one side and after you get a couple strokes in you can take a look and make sure that you're wearing evenly all the way across we're going to do most of our work here on the thousand grit side and then we'll jump over and hit the eight thousand You should be able to feel when it smooths out and that should tell you that you've got nice even removal of metal on the bottom and that looks really good. We're going to jump over to the other one uh, before we hit the 8000 grit. Keep your stone nice and wet. Now on this one, you can tell that this surface and this surface are raised up. That's intentional and that allows these two surfaces to be you know, even with each other and they're going to remove metal at a very similar rate. This blade is a little bit bigger. It would be easier to do this if you had a big square of, 
of sandpaper, but we're gonna make it work on here. And kind of take a peek at our work and we see that this has smoothed off and it looks like we're touching all the way across. Uh, we'll just go, I don't know, maybe uh, another minute or so. A um, couple dozen strokes. All right, everything looks really even on there. That did, uh, that did very nice. Let's move on to the 8,000 grit. All right, we have our 8,000 stone all soaked in. So if you see all of this darkness that was not on the stone before, that is material metal that we have removed here. All right, that looks really good. I think this one looks pretty good as well. All right, let's get this cleaned up and we will put it back together. These are metal and metal does not like water. So we wanna make sure that we've got a coating, a coating of oil on here to put them back together. Uh, you always want to keep these things lubed. Just put a little drop in the blade there. Any sort of machine oil, sewing machine oil, light machine oil is perfect for this job. I like Ballastol. I use it pretty much on everything. Firearms, knives, tools, wrenches. Good product to have. Reassembly, not really a big deal. I've got this pretty, pretty oily. And uh, we'll put some more oil on it once we get it together. Now, the size of these holes and the size of these holes here, that allows us to do the setup thing that I was talking about earlier in the video. So we're gonna get our screws started in here, and then I'll show you how to get them lined up so that you get a good, clean cut. All right, so I have these two just completely snugged uh, pretty much as loose as they will go. I can definitely still move it around. Now, I wanna remind everyone, I am not a barber, but I have cut my little boy's hair. He's gonna be eight this summer and I've given him every haircut. Just something that I wanted to learn how to do and so I did it. Now, I have learned uh, quite a few things about setup here and one of the things that's the most important to me is if I push this blade all the way down and I have my lever all the way down, it's possible for this top blade that vibrates for it to be above the level of your back blade here. Now, you don't want that to, ha to happen. You always want to have a little bit showing. I don't know if you guys can see that. So this outside one here, the bottom one, we want to have it to where even when it's levered all the way down, we want there to be just a little bit of this bottom blade taller than the blade that vibrates. Now, it's my suspicion that that is what allows this to cut you. If this top blade, the one that's moving, if it is higher than the bottom blade, that's where you're going to end up cutting you know, around the ears. And I've done that before. I've learned that lesson. Uh, I'm sure that if you're a barber and you're watching this, you probably already know more about this than I do. But I'm going to push this down and I'm going to try to keep it as level as possible. I don't want one side to be higher than the other because I have all that range of motion there that I can adjust this. So I'm going to have my lever all the way down and I'm going to go down until I've got not very much at all. So let me get this uh, move. Let me get this tightened up and I'll show it to you. Some of you professionals, you can set this up however you want, but as a casual hair cutter who only uses these a couple times a month, uh, I think that might work for me. Okay, I have you in here real tight and I've got my bottom blade extended out with the lever here and I'm gonna bring it in and I want you to watch how much protrusion I have there on the bottom. And that is almost even I don't even know, it, you'd have to get some feeler gauges out to measure that, it's real small. I might actually wanna go a little bit more. 
if you get your screws snugged in down here, you can just do a little tapping and it'll move just a little bit for you. I think I'm actually gonna pull mine out a little bit more. But anyway, I hope this helped you. Uh, I think you can do this job. It's not too hard and kind of get some long life out of a cheap set of trimmer blades because you can just keep sharpening these things over and over again. All right, I'm gonna leave you with that. Eagle Run 2-3, thanks for watching. Oh yeah.